I can't be the only person who's ever wanted to load into a game of extended timeline for EU4 and just let it run. The crazy number of bookmarks in this mod makes for some interesting concepts, but today I have my eyes on the first one. The Roman Empire is absolutely massive, competing with Han China for that number one spot. Parthia is knocking at the Roman doorstep, with war between the two inevitable. This video is long, and that's because we're going over 2,000 years today, all the way from 58 AD to the present day, and boy, let me tell you, there is some weird stuff that happens in this timeline. So buckle up, because this one is going to be fun. And this video is not sponsored, but I would not be able to make these videos without the kind and generous support from the people over on Patreon who get early access to all the videos on the channel, as well as access to exclusive roles and chats in the Discord. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to be a Giga Chat and support the channel, click the link in the description below and support me on Patreon. I think most all of us have at least once loaded in and played, or at least tried to play a game in extended timeline. It's not necessarily the most like flavor packed mod that I've ever played, uh, but you definitely can't say that the scope is not short of the most impressive thing you've ever seen. It is currently 58, the year of our Lord, and uh, Rome is doing pretty dang good. There is the Parthians over here, but for the time being, I think they're all right. We are uh, under Lord Imperator Nero, and uh, things are getting a little spicy in the empire. Just recently, there was a little bit of a hubbub over in this uh, small little province called Palestine or Israel. Despite the Hellenic Latin pantheon, controlling the majority of the landed development of the Roman Empire. We do have uh, what's considered Chalcedonian over here, uh, otherwise known as early Christian. So there's also quite a bit of Jews over in the area, Egyptian, Nabataean, whatever that is. So uh, quite a bit of a variety that we can definitely see around here. And uh, I have a feeling that some issues are going to come out of that. And anybody who actually knows history knows that uh, quite a bit of issues are gonna come out of this area. Maybe a guy named Odoacker or something like that. But of course, there's only one way to find out what is going to happen in this time, and that is to turn it on up to speed five and unpause. Oh, um, I actually didn't know this. They start at war. Rome and Parthia start at war, the Parthian War. I think uh, Rome won, but I believe it was kind of the beginning of a slow sort of decline for the Roman Empire after the Parthian Wars. I could be wrong. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of Roma booze in the comments telling me how much of an idiot I am for getting this stuff wrong. Three years in and uh, no signs of stopping with over 200,000 men died. Uh, I think that's a little unrealistic for the time period. But if there's one thing EU4 is good at, it is definitely not population management and or the complete depletment of entire populations. It's not good at that. Inconclusive is uh, what we can draw from that. Nothing, nothing happened. However, there is a couple of subjects that the Romans have over here, and they are integrating them slowly but surely. They just integrated uh, Pontus or one of one of these nations up here. And uh, I have a feeling that they're going to get a little bit stronger, but I don't think it's going to last for long. And I should mention we are in the classical age, an age that is dominated by old and powerful empires such as Rome, Parthia and the Han Dynasty of China. Looks like Nero has died. We've got uh, quite a few pretender rebels flinging around their stuff. Uh, as well as quite a bit of separatists in North Africa and over here in uh, Britannia. So we haven't gotten any Gothic invasions or anything like that going on, but I have a feeling that things are going to be a little unstable. This this may be a precursor. They're at, at, at their force limit, but they have no manpower. They're in a golden era. So we'll see how things go with the Romans. Yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of black lines across this nation. A couple of nations and provinces popping out here and there due to those rebels. The Romans just don't have enough men to get all of the rebels handled. So it looks like they just collapsed and broke to maybe pretender rebels, I think it was. But uh, the separatists, which is what the rest of these guys are, are definitely going to be uh, causing some issues for them. And a few years later, it seems that uh, Galicia, possibly Alemannia, I'm not sure if that was there before, uh, this Bastarni Carpathia, and then Mazab, maybe a couple of provinces more to this uh, Garamantia, popped out. And aside from that, I'm pretty sure they have handled the rebels. They do have a new Imperator who uh, was installed a, a pretender, if you will. And uh, maybe they're going to be stabilized for now. We've got a couple of years, at least until the migration age. So uh, hopefully they can hold it together. Meanwhile, we've got our boys over here in uh, Han China with the uh, the mandate of heaven. Not doing super good, but uh, you know, maybe things will change with that. I actually don't know how extended timeline handles the, uh, the China mechanic. Never touched it, so I wouldn't know. But just like the religion variety alone is super cool. Like clearly Buddhism is a lot more prevalent over here. Hindu, we have Jains, which actually exist today. A lot of people don't know about that. Arabians, right? So lots of uh, lots of fetishists over here in Africa. But I think that it's mostly just because you know, 
there's like there's not really a whole lot of data on the places like that and yeah as soon as they got back on their feet they started reclaiming all of the land that they had previously lost all of these Garamentian provinces have been taken back and uh, it does look like uh, Mazab has also been integrated as well as Galicia. So Rome is on their feet yet again. They've got like 80,000 troops in the field and some manpower. So at least for now, I think they're going to be steady. China, however, has a couple of rebels. Might be a sign of things to come, but then again, it might not. Seems like the AI is kind of hit or miss, whether it collapses as China or not. Oh, very good. Pontus has been brought in and it looks like the Scythians are being pushed back over here. So uh, Rome has a little bit more of a uh, of an appearance over here and uh, they have also eaten up their uh, former breakaway states over in uh over in britannia so things are steady looking on the up and up though with all the growth that the romans are doing looks like uh, parthia is also growing quite a bit with a bit of expansion going in basically every direction so we'll see how things go with that pretty sure um i know what happened with these guys if you don't know in real life i'm pretty sure these are the guys who ended up conquering parthia to like reinstate the Zoroastrian Persian sort of a thing. So kind of cool. Doesn't look like it's going to happen this timeline, but uh, you know, it would be interesting if it happened. They're already Zoroastrian, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the Kwama whatever guys are the ones who uh, killed the embassy for the Mongol horde of Genghis Khan or Kublai or one of the guys and uh, then, you know, got smashed by the Mongols. I'm pretty sure it was them. Oh, okay. So it looks like Christendom is spreading quite a bit over here in the Western portions of the empire. And it's actually just popping up over here in uh, the Eastern portions as well. So uh, I would imagine it's event driven, but there's definitely quite a few things changing, uh, especially for Christendom. Uh, the religious stuff, some stuff is getting converted to Hellenic over here, but i um, not really sure if that's going to stick around because it looks like Christendom or Christianity, probably would be a better word, is spreading quite quickly. Well, we're about 100 years in, and uh, Rome ain't feeling too good. We have Gallia, Gaul has popped out, Thracia has popped out, uh, Cappadocia, Cilicia, Egypt, Judea even has popped out, Mauritania has popped out and has grown quite a bit with Algeria over here. So Rome definitely seen better days, and they've got more rebels on the way. We also have a couple of nations over here in Britain that have popped out, so uh, maybe the beginning of the end at the year about 150. So definitely earlier than in our timeline, but uh, not looking so good. Though who is looking good is Parthia, slowly but surely continuing to grow, but we do have the Huns over here. So you gotta be careful of the Huns, but uh, yeah, they're looking pretty good over here, Parthia. And then uh, Han has lost, I think a little bit of land here and or they've just grown a bunch of land over here, annexing Tibet, like, you know, over a thousand years early. So, you know. <laughs> It is what it is. And just a few years later, we've got Brigantia looking pretty good over here in the northern portions of Britannia. So we very well may see a nice little blob pop out over here on the Isles. That would be pretty cool to see. And then over here, we have Parthia picking at the bones, eating all of the scraps that are left behind. Uh, people pop away from the Roman Empire and then Parthia just goes in and annexes them. So that's pretty good. And on the religious front, it is absolutely a mess. Religious unity is not a thing. It does not exist in the Roman Empire. It is truly a melting pot with Christianity spreading incredibly quickly. We've even got a couple of uh, nations who have either accepted it or have syncretized with it, which is pretty cool. This sounds a little off, a little bit, but we're just going to roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, Rome's done. Rome is definitely dying. Take a look at this uh, diplomatic map mode. They are absolutely getting smashed by everybody. They're in like six different defensive wars. All of them are defensive. Thrace has attacked them. Gaul has attacked them. Kush has attacked them. Uh, they're just not doing well. And uh, they're they're definitely crumbling. Meanwhile, Parthia continues their growth unabated. <laughs> I, I think they've probably surpassed the Romans if I had to guess. And I can't imagine the complete lack of religious unity is doing them any favors at all. That and, you know, more exhaustion. Though you gotta say it, peak Phrygia over here, popping off, looking real good. And somehow we have a Francia over here, or Francia, whatever you call it, looking uh, also pretty good. I did a Francia run like a long time ago, like five years ago in extended timeline. Very fun run. Meanwhile, over in China, we've got uh, Ning, not the Han, but uh, a different dynasty. And they've also pushed over quite a bit into Korea as well as down into Vietnam. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Rome is not feeling too good. Uh, Carinus, Servius, or Severus, whatever, not feeling good. Definitely in charge of a dying empire. So to anybody who says that uh, embracing Christianity is what led to the fall of Rome, show them this. Have you ever seen revanchism so high? It was at like 92% before I paused 
Uh, yeah, they're doing really badly. At least they get some, you know, tax modifiers and stuff to help them, you know, recover. But I don't think it's really going to matter a whole lot. They just lost a ton of land over here to the Gauls, like a ton. They conquered literally all of that land in one war. Uh, and they still have a couple of wars left, and I think Brigantia probably going to uh, take their lunch. And almost 150 years in, Rome is absolutely in shambles. Still the number one great power by a decent margin, minus, you know, Parthia and Ning. But probably not for long. Parthia in number two, Ning in number three. The Western Satraps over in India in the fourth spot with this Satavahana, in, uh, also in India, over in the fifth. Astarnia in the Germanic Druidic people in the sixth plot. Very cool. And then that Zhongnu, which I believe is Mongolia in the seventh. And then whatever that one is in the eighth. I keep wanting time to pass, but I just can't do it. Parthia is occupying like half of Rome. Whoever this guy is right here is occupying the rest. Britannia has formed a barbarian tribe, Druidic Britannia. Very cool. And then Phrygian France, because Phrygia has conquered like half of Gaul. And I have no idea how. Egypt is literally just the Nile Delta with Kush surrounding them, which is super funny. And Parthia is absolutely massive, very much surpassing Rome and only going up. We are in the late classical age and I don't really know how much that changes stuff. I know the migration age is when things start to really heat up, but we're only on uh, admin tech eight or nine right now. So it's gonna be quite a while before we get there. But uh, maybe we're going to see some interesting stuff pop out of here. We could get Sassanids possibly. I'm sure that there's probably some like historical events to cause people to switch switch and shift over to uh, like their historical tags. But only time is going to tell. In the year 220 of our Lord, Rome has been fractured officially. We have West Roman Empire and East Roman Empire. Byzantium by uh, the lay folks. And then, you know, West Rome for the rest of us. Um, we have Switzerland, who is formed from Alemannia, which is pretty cool. Gallia has been gobbled up by Cotia, who's the one province miner over here uh, in 14 or in the beginning. And um, it's it's a mess. Parthia has released Pontus as a subject. Meanwhile, they're conquering a ton of lands up here. And the Huns are just getting squeezed out, not able to do anything. Meanwhile, over here, we have Purple China, Sui, <laughs> and uh, they've grown even more. So. It's safe to say that China in extended timeline is pretty strong, at least in the late classical age. And it's crazy to think that even after splitting off Eastern Rome, West Rome is still the number three great power. Uh, things are definitely looking bad for them, but um, they've they've swapped places with a few other people. Obviously institutions are going to be important when considering great power list. But um, yeah, Rome is no longer the number one spot. Dethroned by Parthia, well deserved in my opinion. They're doing incredibly well. So I guess the phrase has been changed. It's not rule Britannia now, it's just rule, rule Brittany. <laughs> Brittany rules the waves. Algeria has actually pushed up here into Sicily as well as Campania. And then Naples exists in Sicily, I guess. Sardinia is free, which is pretty cool. And we have a couple of nations popping out over here. And I think we're probably going to see a couple more if I had to guess. Meanwhile, Byzantium not feeling too hot. Got like seven provinces left and uh, is doing worse than it is in 1444 in our timeline. So uh, not definitely kind of hate to see it, but uh, Parthia has pushed all the way over and they've pushed over into uh, Troy, I guess this area would be. And uh, Cyprus is free, Egypt is popping off. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Now down to two provinces, it is worth mentioning that Byzantium is indeed Christian. So at least some part of the Roman Empire decided to embrace the true faith before eventually, you know, falling off. Meanwhile, uh, most of the Christians over here getting wiped out by Zoroastrians, but they are thriving over here, but Germanic has pushed quite a bit over into Gaul as well. The Drudists are mostly being pushed up here, but also over here, I guess. Uh, but Christendom is doing pretty well over here in Southern France. So, you know, maybe we'll see how things go with them. And uh, 284, the year that Byzantium fell, worst year of my life. But at least we still have West Rome, at least, you know, what's left of West Rome. Kind of crazy to see Algerians over here taking up, you know, basically pretty good borders in Southern Italy. And then these guys over here, whatever that name is, pushing well up into here with a couple of tags here and there. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of big blobs in this region that have popped out of like the power vacuum that came from Rome falling. But this Pistarnia, terrifying. I would not want to mess with them. Same with Parthia would definitely not want to mess with them. They got their own Mary Nostrum going on over here as, as well as over here, to be honest with you. And we have Sassanids here, a subject of Parthia. I don't know if that's intentional, but that's kind of weird. And China has, 
yet again changed to yawn. So I definitely think that this is scripted, but it's cool. I'm a fan of it. So I think I lied before and said that they were gone. Maybe they were, I don't know, but Byzantium is a one province minor in Cephalonia and uh, West Rome is just gone. And I heard a noise. I didn't know what it was. Uh, it turns out that it was an emperor of the HRE being elected. And it's Benevento. It's like one of one of like four nations that are in the HRE. So it formed and I, I don't know how, but here you go. Can't imagine it's going to be passing any reforms anytime soon, but it is Chalcedonian, which is pretty cool. There's two princes, a couple of other guys over here. So, okay. <laughs> now the migration age is here, which would be scary if you were, I don't know, a Roman empire that had to deal with migratory natives, but we don't have to deal with that because there is not one. So the nomadic tribes have a lot less to worry about here in uh, 360. And there is still a very big Parthia over here. Um, and it doesn't look like Song now is doing very good. But over here, we've got quite a few blobs, uh, notably very beautiful red Albania. Love to see it. Byzantium is gone. Thracia has uh, been conquered. At least part of Thracia has been conquered. Thrace of Thracia has been conquered by the Parthians. Phrygia actually has their name all in one place, cutting Francia. Uh, which is still over here chilling out and, um, you know, not really seeing a whole lot of other stuff except for maybe a little bit of consolidation between certain blob Britannia and these guys have gone back and forth a couple of times. Still kind of weird to see how many different blobs there are and uh, the HRE is just, it's here. But I have to say, I'm a big fan of this massive Germanic group pushing the Slavs out of like the Slavic region, right? I mean, I guess you could, this is all Slavic, right? Of course, like modern day and stuff like that. But the Slavs not being kind of in the Poland region is just kind of a funny thing to see. Uh, also, it uh, looks like Christianity is doing very good in Italy as well as Iberia and Southern Gaul. So I definitely think that they're going to at least have a chance. But that Germanics, that's, uh, that's pretty scary. That is pretty terrifying. Yeah, Parthia, it just keeps on getting scarier and scarier. Now they have snaked through Thracia. And now they have like basically the entirety of the Aegean. Uh, this Sijimasa people... Uh, Christians over here in Iberia have crushed Algeria and now they're kind of reeling as well. Uh, they're also encroaching on whatever exists of the Holy Roman Empire. Meanwhile, Switzerland has pushed down. Not very Swiss of them. Phrygia has pushed into Germany. Very cool. And then uh, this uh, Vis Varisica, I'm not going to pronounce any of this right, has taken a ton of land over here as well as over into Illyria. Marco Mani doing pretty good, which is pretty cool. The Goths have actually been resurgent. They got crushed. I'm pretty sure they were just gone by this Bastarnia, and uh, they're over here in Scandinavia as well as over here with a uh, very nice Prussian borders. Meanwhile, I'm pretty sure that these guys have popped up recently, so I think we're going to start seeing some sort of African people sort of popping up here and there. Maybe these guys are new. I'm not really sure exactly how all that works in the, the timeline of the stuff, but uh, we are seeing new tags popping up. At least I think we are. You need to keep in mind when I'm recording something like this. This is over the course of like hours and hours, and I have never touched this mod or at least not in years and I don't really know how a lot of this stuff goes, so I'm doing my best, I promise you. So you guys remember how I was talking about how absolutely crazy Parthia was? Well, I mean, clearly you can just ignore that, toss it all out because they are literally dead. There's like 10 provinces spread out across the entire land that they used to own, and a bunch of nations popped out. I don't really know what happened. I think they had a bad war with the Western satraps and went bankrupt or something like that. Regardless, we've got a lot of new tags that we didn't have before, even a Kurdistan on the map. We've even got this one over here, Kamania. The Huns are back in full force. But of course, the major thing we're looking at is going to be a massive Sassanids filling up where the Persians used to be. So I don't know, uh, maybe they'll be the major nation that pops out of here. They're still in a pretty weak spot considering the fact that they're surrounded by some pretty solid nations and Egypt is pretty powerful themselves. I also hadn't really looked at the culture a whole lot, but it's kind of funny to just see Armenian, like just all of this is Armenian, right? We've also been seeing a bit of conversion over here. There's been some French stuff popping up, but then also it looks like Gallic is like pushing into the French, the Frankish lands. So that's pretty good as well. Greek is definitely getting squeezed. It used to be all this land over here as well as down here, but it looks like Neapolitan and Egyptian have kind of pushed them out. And we did have Jin, but now it's Yan. So I, it just keeps changing and I don't really know how the game decides that and I don't really know how to keep track of it. So I'm just gonna point it out every once in a while. Regardless, they're doing pretty good. They conquered a bit of land up here and I think they lost quite a bit of land to the Western satraps, but um, that's not really a surprise. They're massive. Egypt is doing good. Tunisia has formed, which is uh, pretty funny because they're, you know, they're Christian. And they were kicked out of southern Italy by uh, Cotetia or Co Cotia or whatever, the nation that was over here and ended up conquering Italian over here. 
Well, now they've been exiled to a lot of land over here, losing a ton of their land over here to Brittany and Frisia, who are absolutely massive. And uh, sadly, Switzerland is, is getting dominated and they're mostly getting pushed out of Switzerland, which is mildly hilarious. Gothia doing pretty well up here in the north and is actually pushed up into Sweden. So we definitely have a, a blob that is looking to take some shape up here, which I'm definitely here for. And it actually looks like a lot of these people over here, like the Slavs are starting to fill in this area. I don't think that they're here before. Pretty sure this is new stuff and shout out the Magyars over here. We also have some new tags popping up down here in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I wasn't smoking crack. They, they definitely are just kind of popping up. And it actually looks like Pontus is Christian as well as these nations up here in Dacia. So that is pretty cool. We still have this Zamoxilist or whatever over here, but the Druidics are all gone from the region that were over here. And now they've been pushed exclusively to Brittany, which is pretty sweet. And honestly, the religious map is, is pretty clean outside of just like this specific region. Uh, things are definitely, definitely evening out. And it definitely looks like Christianity has a fair spread. Uh, you got the West and then you got the East, a little more solid over here in the West, but you know, time will tell how that will shape up for them because We've seen how weird things can be so far in extended timeline. So I can't say I expected it, but 500 years in, the Western Satraps are the number one great power in the world with Yan right behind them, Egypt in the third spot, under a thousand development, Tunisia in the fourth, with uh, another Indian blob in the fifth, the Sassanids coming out of the death of Parthia in the sixth spot, with seventh going to that one, and then Thracia in the eighth spot with a little over 500 development. The difference between first and eighth power is a little over a thousand, which is really not a lot in the big scheme of things. And so looking at the map, you're probably going to see at least somewhat of a uh, recognizable shape. Any of you history buffs out there are gonna see it because yeah, we got a caliphate on our hands. Islam was born and not only born, but uh, dominated everything, literally everything. They're already converting a ton of land over here. Christians absolutely in shambles. And the craziest part about all of this is that Egyptian Britain is a thing. Apparently they just like sliced and diced Brittany. I, I got nothing, I got nothing, man. And for some reason, uh, Phrygia split up into a couple of different tags. We have Lorraine, Burgundy and Italy. The land that each of them has is pretty random, but it all came from one nation. No idea why. Thracia continues to dominate in the south with this uh, Gepidia in the north, right under Poland, and their personal union of Bohemia, who came from the Goths, their, their Goth nations. Meanwhile, the Western satraps over here continuing to dominate, pushing well into uh, Iran in that area, and uh, what a throwback, Han back in charge of China. We also have the Lone Cephal over here on the east coast of Africa, which is uh, pretty funny. And a few more nations in Sub-Saharan Africa are popping up here and there, but uh, they better be careful because if they run into uh, Egypt, they're gonna run into a buzzsaw. Kind of crazy to think that uh, the Christian world has almost exclusively been wiped out, except for Ireland. Ireland, the last bastion of Christianity in a very, very Muslim slash pagan world. Uh, pretty cool to see, honestly. And aside from pink Poland, Russia, and uh, Danish Scandinavia, apparently, Italy continues to dominate here. I, I have no concept of why Italy is up here, but I'm not gonna ask too many questions. Corinthia over here is um, creating some of the most horrible border gore I've ever seen with Moravia also in the mix, as well as Bavaria, because nobody can just be where they need to be. Bavaria kind of is, but then not, and not, and not, and not, and Moravia is definitely not where it needs to be, except for maybe like one province over here. So yeah, I think things are slowly settling down, but um, doesn't look right. Meanwhile, it does look like Thracia has taken at least a little bit of land from Egypt. So maybe there's somebody finally going to question their power. Uh, and meanwhile, the Western satrapy is just gone, uh, completely collapsed. Looks like the Mongols took some stuff in the North and then this uh, Satavahana has taken some in the South. Uh, Ming is here and they're very terrifying. They have so much land in Southeast Asia as well as over in Korea. I um, I would not want to mess with this Ming and if they can keep the mandate up, they're going to be very powerful. We also have some boys popping up over here on the East Coast. So Safala is no longer the only nation in Eastern Africa. We now have a bunch of guys, especially Kilwa. They're usually pretty powerful, at least in vanilla. Same with over here in uh, the Indonesian islands. We have Brunei, whatever this is, and then this Banjar, a couple of nations popping up here and there. So it's not just like 
one nation anymore. We even have Palembang, so maybe we'll have some pirates. But it just blows my mind seeing this Germanic as well as this Zamoxilist or whatever. What a renaissance, huh? Like they were gone, basically. They were exclusively almost gone. And now they are here and they're like pretty powerful in the big scheme of things. They're a great power. Number seven great power, actually, with almost a thousand development. Egypt with over 4,000 is crazy. Double the Ming with Italy even in the third spot. Um, I don't know how things are going to be looking here. I'm sure that things are going to change as time goes on. We are in the feudal age, uh, so things are definitely going to be, you know, affected because of that. Uh, and then up next is going to be the high middle ages as well as the late middle ages. And then we're going to finally get into the EU4 timeline with the age of discovery. So we'll see how things go. Uh, unless anything major happens, I'm not really going to be checking in a whole lot, mostly just because this video is already going to be very long and I want to make sure that we're getting the interesting stuff out. Oh, and about 50 years later, things are getting spicy. Egypt has pumped out a couple of nations over here in Iberia, some mass revolts going on with Ireland taking the Picts back, as well as some land over in Wales. And an interesting development on the religion front here, we have Sunni with Shia existing exclusively in Wales. Wales is uh, the Shia bastion to the Western world, I suppose. Oh, and uh, Burgundy formed from Italy. So that's a thing as well. But with all these new tags over here in Iberia, I imagine things are going to finally get a little more interesting with a, a little bit of diversity over here. We also have Portugal, so very cool. Things are definitely staying spicy over here in the Western portions of the known world. We have a crazy variety of nations that have popped out of the once sad, dull husk of Egypt, who's responsible for spawning and spreading the Muslim faith. Now they are resigned to, you know, like Nubia or Kush or whatever this area is called. Uh, but over here in Europe, things are looking quite weird. We've got Swabia, who has popped out of Italy, who split into Burgundy and then Italy and Burgundy. And now it's Swabia with Burgundy in it. So things are just like very strange. I assume it's sort of like a succession thing, uh, if I had to guess. Sweden popped out of uh, Poland. And now they're getting eaten up by Denmark, Perm, and this Japidia, who is Germanic. They are all Germanic. Literally everybody over here is Germanic. And again, Christians on the back foot with the Zamoxilis not looking so good because the Germanics are breathing down their throat. Shia, however, has had a bit of a uh, renaissance that has spawned. I'm not sure if this was happening last time I checked in. It's been a couple of hours, but uh, Muslim has switched and uh, is now Shia and Sunni, as you would expect, uh, with I would say like 50-50, maybe a little bit more Sunni. We also have one Nestorian province that was over here. It was Assyria, actually, which is kind of cool. If, if you do know, then you know. Assyrians in the modern day are primarily like a Christian minority in the region. So kind of cool, actually. Meanwhile, Zoroastrian is like two provinces over here, which is crazy to see, actually. Very cool. And somehow, someway, Jain continues to dominate the majority of the development in India, which is unexpected with Hindu being pushed mostly up into like China and whatever this like Khorasan region. So that's pretty good. It's like 1080 right now. And the HRE ain't doing so good. It's a uh, it's worse every time we see it. And the, the emperor is a one province minor island of Malta. So yeah, HRE not going to be a factor, at least unless something crazy happens. As expected, Kilwa continues to dominate over here with this uh, Sapion or whatever, Sarapion. They're doing OK up here in the Horn of Africa. And Han is back with a Wuhan up here. Not even close to Wuhan, but uh, I wonder if uh, we're going to see a disease come out of this place. So it is pretty interesting to see an Armenia back spread out here, uh, but they're very much a minority in the place that used to be all Armenian. And then we have Arabia and Iraq over here kind of dominating the, uh, you know, Arabian region. Culturally, things just keep on getting weirder and weirder. We have Anglo-Saxon has popped up over here uh, pushing a lot of the kind of old Celtic cultures out and Walloon. France is just Walloon, I guess, which is very funny to see. Meanwhile, Armenian continues to dominate over here in Anatolia and uh, Iraqi kind of making their way over into here. This culture group is very, very big. Now we're into the EU4 like vanilla timeline. It's 1480 right now. And um, it looks pretty different from what I expected, to be honest. I wasn't sure if I expected the blobs to like break up or something, but it's uh, it's probably worse than I expected. Definitely worse than I expected. But I do like Moravian Balkans and Arabian Anatolia. Both pretty good looks. Iraq is uh, doing what uh, what Saddam never was able to do against Iran. 
the Fatamid, Fatamids or whatever are over here. Uh, they were over here before, so that's a thing. And obviously the big German bear in the room, uh, and it's all Germanic religion as well. Like, it's basically all Germanic. It's kind of crazy. Like, if it's not Germanic, Sunni, Hindu, or this generic Muslim, I guess, it's literally just like dying faiths. And it's kind of sad to see just like these giant monolithic cultures and religions, but who knows? Maybe we'll see some stuff happen as uh, the ages continue. We don't have any colonization going on yet either. Nobody has taken any of the ideas, though I have a feeling that once they finally do get over here, uh, they may have a bit of a hard time. There's not a whole lot of land to be taking in the area. Even down in South America, these natives are just like absolutely wild. They are so big. Meanwhile, Africa is definitely filling in. We've got uh, the central Congo area. All of Sub-Saharan Africa, for the most part, is filled in. The Horn of Africa filled in, and all this stuff over here, like Mutapa area, as well as uh, Madagascar, it's all filled in, and it's all Kilwa, which is pretty true for vanilla. And then we have our boring natives over here in uh, Australia, as well as New Zealand, and, uh, you know, they're just gonna do nothing like they always do. Shout out Hawaii, they are here. Um, they're not doing anything. I think this province might need nudged a little bit, but, you know. Maybe he just wanted to go swimming, who knows? And despite the constant rise and fall of all of these various empires, it's pretty consistent that the number one great power has a little over 4,000 and the second great power is around there uh, with Germany out in front and Key over in China in the second spot. This uh, Japidia has been in the top for basically the whole game. They've been a little bit of ebb and flow, but uh, for the last, you know, five, 600 years, they have been very steady in that position, as well as the Indian nation over in uh, the fourth spot. They're, they're doing very good. Arabia getting up into the fifth spot is really cool to see. And Moravia actually kind of consolidating a lot of the weird busted up borders that they had and uh, finally becoming the great power that they do deserve, as well as that other one and uh, Iraq in the eighth spot with over a thousand development. So I'm uh, definitely looking forward to seeing kind of what the AI is capable of doing as we get closer to the end here. And now the next age, well, two ages is upon us. Absolutism is here. Germany still going strong. I don't think they've lost anything. And then there's Caucasia. The funny part is, is that Caucasia has like an Iranian culture. So it's like Iranian nomads settled in this land over here, though they follow the Germanic faith. And it is just, uh, yeah, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Aside from that, things are actually like super steady and consistent with what it has been before. I actually don't know if anything really has changed a whole lot outside of maybe Tang, China, I believe has conquered like a large portion of the land from this Satvahana and uh, they continue to take more by the looks of it. I don't believe that the uh, Lake Victoria natives were here before, but uh, they are now. And we do have a, a Germanic La Plata here. They have formed, they have their colonial empire and uh, they are on their way. And that's it because North America is dominated by the Iroquois who are, uh, they're very big, they're very strong. Not strong enough by the looks of it to get them in the great powers list, though I think that has something to do with them being a native. Either way, Tang is the number one great power, followed by Germany, and then Caucasia in the third, with Arabia in the fourth. That Indian nation, despite getting dumpstered by Tang, is still in the fifth great spot with uh, that other nation, and then Moravia in the seventh with Candace in the eighth. Candace being the Indonesian native, and, and they were like over here, I think they were one of the starting nations, and uh, they've just decided to conquer all the islands. I mean, there's a couple of random natives here and there, but for the most part, they are very much the hegemon of the region. And here we are in 1821, Germany still standing triumphant over a large portion of it, but um, they've had a lot of rebels, like a lot, a lot of rebels. I don't think that they really exist. I think that nobody else is strong enough to just like contest them. I think a lot of these people are very much like spread thin. Uh, especially places like this Caucasia, they have been absolutely dumpstered over and over again. They spit out Danzig of all people who are like not even close to Danzig and then Hanover who is just, you know, Scandinavia. <laughs> we now have Arabia as the preeminent power of the region with Andalusia popping out of Germany about a hundred years ago, I think, which is pretty cool. We have Zhou or Zhu or however that is pronounced as the emperor of China right now. And I'll tell you what, they are incredibly powerful. They have over a million troops right now and it's 1821. They have a lot of troops and they're also colonizing alongside their friends over in Arabia. Andalusia had actually colonized this land down here, but it's not looking too good. It looks like uh, this giant Chalchuchui is going to take it over and uh, that is not a good look for them. This is a colonial nation called Umayyad. I don't know why, but uh, it is a colonial nation and it is owned by Andalusia. Over here, this is a different story though. This is Arabia as well as a little bit of, uh, of China. 
So uh, we've got some Arabian West Indies, Arabian Colombia, and then Jiu Mexico. Not to be confused with the other Jiu Mexico, which is massive, as well as their uh, Alaska, I guess, over here in California, and then over here as well, uh, then Iroquois, because you know it has to be the AI taking over the entire New World as a great example of why I always remove the New World natives because they do stuff like this. I imagine this is probably just way worse because it's extended timeline, but this is just like infuriating to see for me. Meanwhile, Arabia and Kilwa are the guys in charge of Southern Africa, and uh, the rest is just kind of split between a bunch of different nations. We do have some unification going on, but uh, it looks like Gen A's pushed down into the Congo and uh, slicing and dicing down here. So with give or take about 200 years left, we have a very, very large discrepancy between the Emperor of China at 7,400 dev uh, over Germany, who had like 4,500 last we looked and now has dropped quite a bit. Almost tied with Arabia, even though they are colonial, so that's a lot of their development. Sicily in the fourth spot, which is a noose one, and then uh, Kilwa has climbed up to the fifth with Moravi in the sixth, Poland in the seventh, and that in I think it's an Indian nation, that Yudheda down in the eighth, but quite a lot of development going on in the great powers so very cool to see we also have a military hegemon of china like i said they had over a million troops which is uh it's terrifying and i think at this point we just have to accept the fact that germanic is like the de facto religion of the western world they're pagans i guess it is the information age it is actually 2032 because i uh was out of the room and i didn't see that enough time had passed to go to the current day the age of information is here and it is horrendous, and I absolutely hate it. Germany still exists exclusively outside of Germany. Swabia is here, existing mostly outside of Swabia, though I think you can make an argument that like, kind of, like I think this is Swabia down here. So kind of crazy borders for them. I don't really know how they manage that. Also, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Arabia is just gone. I, I don't see it anywhere. I see Andalusia and Iraq. Very, very scary Iraq. Almost as scary as China giving a giant hug to a massive, massive Nepal, who I'm pretty sure is also outside of Nepal for the most part. So bit of bit of strange borders going on over here. Gotta give a shout out to a United Japan whenever you see it. And a mostly united Indonesia under this uh, Srivijaya or whatever, who I'm pretty sure has been in the Great Powers list most of the game, if I if I can recall. We do have a Chinese Australia, as well as a Joe Pacific down here, which I'm pretty sure is just their Australian colony. And South America is almost exclusively untouched, except for this massive, massive native tag. And on the very tip, Sicily, with their capital here in like Patagonia or whatever this area is. We also have Arabian La Plata with their uh, capital in like, all Fukalandas or whatever, bro. Oh, that's so good. Cuba is independent. Maya is independent. And uh, Iroquois is still pretty massive outside of uh, a couple of colonial things. There actually used to be a lot more colonial stuff. And it looks like that uh, the, the natives took it back because this used to all be German Alaska, like all of this. And then Jew Canada was literally like ha all of this. Uh, Jew Mexico has grown quite a bit, but then this Acoma has taken over a ton of land with Pima. So I think that the natives struck back against the colonizers, which yeah, pretty based. On the religious map, you're going to see some interesting black lines. And if you've played Extended Timeline before, you already know what it is. But it's irreligious is actually what it is. Uh, it's, it's basically secular. That is the, uh, the religion. It, these are secular Germanic nations. They'll have perfect religious harmony with their <laughs> ancient pagan Germanic people that inhabit their lands, I guess. Meanwhile, we have Muslim over here and Sunni over here with Hindu mostly being converted over to irreligious as well. The Jains still dominate India, splitting it with the uh, Sunnis, which is pretty cool. And Confucian has, um, <laughs> I guess they've harmonized with like everybody and they're just feeling pretty good. They're just, everybody is friendly. They're all the true faith, you know? So it looks like the most irreligious nation in the world is actually this Indonesian nation, which is pretty cool because I'm pretty sure that like modern day Indonesia is very much a Muslim country. I could be wrong. I'm sure it's probably quite secular like most, you know, developed nations are, but I, I feel like there's a lot of Muslims in Indonesia. I could be wrong. Leave a comment below. And even the natives are irreligious, which is funny. Up here, again, the natives are irreligious, but uh, we do have one Germanic nation over here in uh, Germanic Canada. So they're still holding out. Oh, and I forgot to mention we have 
a massive commonwealth, of course, with like perfect commonwealth borders from like history, plus some Russian, and then plus whatever this abomination is over here. So definitely got to point that out. The culture map mode is hilarious with Anglo-Saxon over here. And how about that Walloon culture? Oh my gosh, Pannonian, massive, Venetian and Armenian splitting it over here. Armenia has not had a country in like 1200 years and they are just still the dominant people over here. So cool. Punjabi over here is like the primary culture of like the entire Eastern portion of the Iraq empire, which is pretty cool as well. One single Gallic province in the entire world is very cool to see. And the new world is of course, quite a mix match with a bunch of other things. Uh, obviously we've got uh, our Chinese Canadian and uh, whatever these are over here. And then uh, I don't really know if we've got a whole lot of German cultures. No, just New Brunswicker, Escadian, Frisians down here in Colombia, uh, whatever this one is down here. But uh, yeah, realistically, it's mostly native cultures, which uh, not really too surprising. Uh, that's usually what you would expect to see. Oh, and I said Chinese, it's Arabian, Arabian Australian, and then uh, Maori mixed with Chinese Oceanian. So pretty cool. We end the run with Zhu over 10,000 development, which is crazy. Iraq with over 7,000, Swabia with over 7,000, Andalusia with over 6,000. And then dropping down to the fifth spot is the Commonwealth with 4,500 with this uh, Chalakwi or whoever that is with 3,400 as well uh, as Kilwa in the seventh spot with 31. And then that uh, Indonesian nation with almost 2,500. So a lot of dev in the top eight, not, not too surprising. I mean, extended timeline is, it covers a lot of time, right? And dev cost kind of goes down over time. So you see some pretty crazy numbers in the late game. We have an economic hegemon in the works for Zhu with, uh, I think this is Iraq, stacking up the military hegemon in its entirety, which is pretty cool to see. Almost as cool as seeing you make it to the very end of this video, which is incredible. I appreciate you. And if you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, because there's a lot of content on the channel that you're gonna miss out on if you're not already subscribed. If you wanna support me, you can check out the Patreon linked in the description or click the join button below the video. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I just wanna let you know that I appreciate you. And I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. Special thanks to Kaiser Dar, of Akadia, Chiol, Gamus23, Ian Powell, Cannon Fodder, Josh Kipchinski, Agent Rhino, Blonde Damon, Isaiah, Grover, Bubba J, Saranska, Ricardo, Cobalt, Rex Rex, Nathan Albright, and many more.